All right, what is up, Fortnite fam? My name is Coco Loco, bringing it back again to bring some advanced tips and tricks. This time for playing the mid game. We did a part one for early game video a few weeks back, so you should check that out if you haven't seen it already. Now we always get asked by newer competitive players how you're supposed to approach the mid game. Like, I mean, I see pros doing it all the time. Should I go for a limbs? Or, you know, is it better to play passively? Well, guys and girls, it can depend on the situation. We're going to be going over several of them and explain what you want to do. And then we'll take a look at a few examples from Kanata and Mr. Savage to see how they react in different mid-game scenarios. My question for you today is, which playstyle do you prefer for arenas? Are you the, I don't want to get bored, so I'm going to push everyone I see type? Or are you the kind of person that would rather play it safe and rank up? Perhaps somewhere in the in-between? Let me know in the comments. And before we start, if you're looking for more tips and tricks, you should check out ProGuides.com. Our courses written by experienced pros can teach you the knowledge you need to reach the next level. Like maybe you're looking to win some more scrim matches or perfect tunneling techniques. Well, we've got courses for all of those and many more. Hit the video with a like, subscribe to our channel, then follow the link in the description or visit ProGuides.com to join today. All right, all right, all right. So usually when players struggle to reach the end game and ask us what they can do to improve their chances, we tell them to avoid mid-game fights. That's the number one rule you should try to follow after the first circle and up until the fifth, aka the 50-50 zone. Why are you holding me back, bro? Why are we avoiding fights? A lot of reasons, guys. A massive one being that third parties become a lot more prevalent. Now, I want to give some technical reasons why that is, and there are some. But truthfully, most players in this game just love to play aggressively. They won't think of the consequences when taking engagements. In their mind, getting kills is what Fortnite is all about, not going for the win. And honestly, that's a lousy mindset to hold, especially if you're trying to place well in a tournament or rank up in arenas. It's all about the W, my friends, come on! Let's get that win. So third parties are an enormous issue. If another player or team sees a build battle going on, you can bet they're going to join the fight. Why not, right? In some cases, they can just sit back and spam their rifles at whoever they think is low. Maybe even destroy your structures and knock you down from height. Or they can swoop in, swoop, swoop, at the end of your fight and mop up whoever's left. Clean up on aisle three. No! The incentive for third partying during the mid game is ridiculous. Getting two players or teams worth of loot can set you up for winning the entire game sometimes. So this is why a lot of players do it. Then there's losing your resources. It's not like the early game, where if you lose health and mats during a fight, you can recover relatively quickly. The early game usually has more chests to hit up, a reboot van, material everywhere to harvest, and fewer players nearby to interrupt you. But during the mid game, a lot of that doesn't exist. So it becomes a lot harder to bounce back from an engagement. I thought there was a bounce house here. <laughs> where is it? And with the end of the match approaching, you never want that to happen. Ideally, you want to go in every endgame with sufficient health, materials, and additional healing items. Because the last few minutes of the match is where all the action is at. Yes, it's so fun. It's got placement points and kill opportunities out the wazoo. What is a wazoo, by the way? I've always wondered. Anyway, why take mid-game fights and potentially ruin that? Sure, sometimes they can work out, but in most cases, it'll set you behind. So rather than risking everything by duking it out, work on gathering more loot, materials, fish, and getting into a better position for that end game. Where it's going down, best believe it. Just wait, dude, I'm telling ya. Okay, I wanna show you a bit of footage from Mr. Savage, which I think is like, honestly, the perfect example of why you shouldn't engage during the mid game. So it's the second circle in Slurpee, and Mr. Savage is thirsty for an alim on a guy he saw earlier. They must have some beef. You should go vegan, bro. To tell you the truth, he really shouldn't be fighting here. The zone's coming soon, and he's in a very high traffic area. A lot of people rotate through Slurpee to get heals, which you're about to see in a sec. But he's got a fantastic kit, and he's a bit behind on points in the cup. So I understand his motivation. Since he started off low, Savage never takes hide here until he does this little dancing trick. Actually, I'm not sure if it's a trick or if he's really dancing for a truce. Players usually dance to signal they don't want to fight, which would make sense here because of the oncoming storm, 
but maybe Mr. Savage is doing this as a fake out so they let their guard down. Ooh, you sneaky Mr. Savage, what? Either way, the guy doesn't budge. He's not about the cha-cha. I don't see him anywhere on the dance floor. So Mr. Savage goes on the offensive and manages to take the height. Then it starts to get crazy. Oh God, another player runs into frame down below. Savage gives him a couple of love taps, boom, boom. The first player edits down and tries to run away. Mr. Savage connects a clean laser, really great aim there. So he drops to go on for the limp. But in usual mid-game fashion, the third party yoinks the kill. You yoinker, oh gosh. Mr. Savage starts to fight him too. It goes on for a bit while the storm closes in. Then when he goes for a high ground take, he gets blocked by a tree hitbox, which is very unfortunate. I love you mother nature, but this is very unfortunate. But at least he's making the right play by trying to fight instead of running away. But when he goes for some shots, another player shows up behind and pretty much deletes Savage. Oh, yeah. It's so unfortunate, but that's just the nature of mid game brawls, especially if you can't start them with some sort of advantage. That's why it's better to be on the safe side and don't try to do the cha-cha. Really, Mr. Savage shouldn't have fought in the first place. He probably wasn't expecting a million third parties to show up. And I agree, it got a bit ridiculous. But this is just why you should avoid these fights if it's your desire to win. So Ness, let's take a look at this clip of Kanata and Clicks from the Winner Royale. They show some poor discipline here, so let's take a look at where they went wrong. It's the third zone, and they're moving to get a better spot on the hill to get set up. When Clicks lands a sweet AR laser on the enemy, now in this situation where you just hit a laser on someone, a lot of us would be hungry for the kill. We'd either start spamming our rifles at them or we'd push up close and go for the limb. And they were similar in this situation. They must have not had lunch. They got hungry. This decision resulted in a really rough fight with yet again a third party. Who would have thought a mid game fight resulting in a third party? Ha! <laughs> Yoinkers. Regardless, Clicks ends up in a box fight with one opponent, and while Kanata tries to help, he does unfortunately get knocked. So already a little bit of bad luck and poor position results in Kanata facing a 1v2 situation. Kanata does clean up both the kills, but they get third partied by another team on the hill. This fight obviously wasn't worth it, and they both got killed as a result of their choice to fight this. So guys and girls, the number one rule for mid games is to avoid fights. Simple enough. However, because of how psychotic some players act in this game, you won't always be left alone in your box to your own devices. Sometimes you'll get completely psychoed or get unlucky during the fight. Sometimes you'll run out of materials and pretty often you'll get third partied, even if everything else all goes right. So let's talk about dealing with mid game aggression. Play it cool. The best way to deal with mid game W keys is to prevent them from attacking in the first place. A lot of mid game aggression comes from the fact that we let the enemy gain some sort of advantage over us. Like maybe we're rotating through a horrible low ground position, or perhaps we're not vigilant enough. We don't scout the area around us, we don't pay attention to our opponent's rotation paths, where enemies might be going for resources, all of that stuff. If you want to minimize mid game engagements, you need a keen awareness of your surroundings. Don't just run around only looking forward. You need to regularly scout all around yourself. It may seem like a simple tip, but it helps loads. And don't sit in a small box and hope no one comes knocking. Knock, knock, they're gonna come, dude. In fact, you probably shouldn't sit in a box until you're almost in the end game because there's likely loot or materials out there for you to farm. That's the typical goal for mid games to gather resources and prepare for the end of the match. But yeah, don't just sit in a box and hold your wall chilling because a lot of W cares will see you as weak and contest you. And in those cases, you've got to counter with your own aggression. Don't be passive if you think someone's out for blood. Edit a window and lay down some shots. Fight for the height. Just don't give it up. If you can turn from the defender to the aggressor, you've essentially flip flopped the situation. And you're not even wearing flip flops. You got moccasins on. And with your moccasins, you'll get your opponent to be the one who's scrambling to survive. Next up, let's take a look at a clip from Sen Aspect in an EU solo cash cup. This one is a lot shorter, but it really shows his discipline and game IQ. So he's hanging out on top of the hill and he bases up and spots a player below him dropping down. He goes for shots, but the player is trying to get away and doesn't try to fight him. Here, instead of W King with the high risk of other players hearing the shots and coming to third party, he decides to let the other player go. 
This is a great decision as he's completely stacked on loot and materials, so there's really not much benefit from this fight apart from maybe one weapon upgrade. And there's a giant risk involved, that being the chance of a third party yoinker or just bad luck during the fight. Keep in mind, he's also on 90 pings, so his mechanics in box fighting won't be great either. Overall, weighing the pros and cons, it's not worth engaging on this fight. I'm lagging, bro. <laughs> You're lagging, dude. Just hold back, man. Come on. Oh, all right. Good call. This clip was a bit shorter, but it's really a great example of a situation where you shouldn't even bother with the mid-game fight. Instead of pushing this fight, Aspect heads down to the EGO base to stack up on materials and keep his awesome position on the hill. That he decided not to give up by fighting the player. Oh, and I also want you to see this 200 IQ play by Mr. Savage. It's more hilarious than anything, but his opponent here completely fails at dealing with aggression. Even though Savage fires at him, this guy still tries to pickaxe swing for a truce. Mr. Savage gives him a little old fake out and then lays in some shots. <laughs> he follows up with a nice ranged wall take with his SMG and picks up the kill. Woo, gotta love it. Now I can understand pickaxe swing if they were far from the zone, but they were inside of it. Mr. Savage has high ground and he already showed his intent to fight. Plus with that loadout, I mean gold pump, RPG, purple scar, man, fight back. It hurt me to see this, but I bet Savage was loving it. So <laughs> it's all good. Finally, to wrap up the video, let me go over a few questions you want to ask yourself before you engage in a mid game scuffle. First, do you need mats? If you're running low, sometimes forcing a favorable engagement is your only option. Think of it like it was maybe the third or fourth circle, and there are too many players camped up around you. There's probably no way to harvest mats, so you'll probably have to box fight for a top up. And what I mean by favorable is a situation where maybe you spot the enemy first, or there's a fight already going on that you can third party. You yoinker you. Perhaps you land on a snipe and get their health low, that sort of situation. Of course, there's always a risk in starting mid game fights, but going into the end game with half the max amounts of materials would be risky as well, which is why you might wanna go for one of these impact frags. Just do it, man, come on. What about healing items then? I'm sure most of you know by now how vital slurp fish and floppers are for the end game. Even shield items, you'll definitely need those later on. So if you don't have any, forcing a fight and winning it can be a huge game changer. Do you need utility items? I know those don't exist much in chapter two, but if at any point they can bring back mobility or add other crucial items, pushing and eliminating players when you couldn't find them on your own is a perfectly valid strategy. If you play in a tournament, are you in a low point lobby? If you watch someone like Unknown Army, Booga, or Kanata play in cash cups, they seem to W key everyone whenever they want during their first few games. And they can get away with it too. But those guys are the top mechanical players in their region. They can pull off mid-game aggression in lower point lobbies simply because of how insane they are at winning build battles and box fights. You guys might not be at their level, but if you think you're above your lobby, you can play a bit more offensively without having to worry about mid-game deaths. This is a pretty tricky decision you'll have to make, so if you're unsure, just follow our advice and play it safe. And another high-level question, is Storm Surge going to be a problem? Storm Surge only shows up in the toughest lobbies, but if you find your way into one, you might have to go for some tags here and there to increase your damage dealt and avoid Storm Surge later on. What a lot of pros do is lay in a shot from far away, then disengage. All you need is the damage dealt, not the limb. So hard engaging isn't always necessary, but it can still be a reason to fight. So guys, to wrap it all up, if you want to play it safe and maximize your performance, avoid mid-game fights. The end game is way too valuable to miss out on. If you fight mid-game, you'll likely get third-partied or lose all your resources trying to eliminate them. So it's generally not even worth doing, even if you're in an advantageous situation. You'll never know when someone's lurking 50 meters away. The best way to deal with aggression is to prevent it in the first place. Namaste. Always be conscious of your surroundings, where enemies landed, where they might rotate, and what paths you should take to stay safe. If you do happen to get pushed, fight back. If you don't put up a fight, you might as well surrender. Why are you playing? Be ready to contest high ground or lay down some suppressive fire. If you can topsy-turvy the battle and become the aggressor, you'll be in a much more promising spot. Flip-flops or moccasins, you can do this. And if you're ever wondering whether or not you should confront players during the mid-game, ask yourself questions like, am I desperate for materials? Or do I need healing items or mobility? If you can, start the fights favorably, like with a beam from your rifle or while perched up on some high ground. 
that'll ensure the highest chances of success. And what are we in it for? We're in it for the W, y'all. Come on, let's go. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed the tips and tricks, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications. Be sure to leave a comment on how you play arena matches, and if you'd like to support us even further, use code PROGUIDES in the item shop. Every purchase you'll make helps out the team, so we really appreciate it a bunch. Once again, it's your host, Coco Loco. You can follow me on the Instagram at Coco Meddler. Guys, you are so cool. You're awesome. You're dope. Never forget that. No matter how you play in Fortnite, you're amazing, okay? And with that being said, I will see you all very soon. Peace out.